let's see, and let's look at running R in batch mode. So first, what is a batch job? That is one of the questions. And the other is how do we write a batch job and how do we submit it? So first I will do a very short introduction to the Slurm scheduler, and then we'll look at the structure of a batch script. And then there will be some examples and you will also try some. So as I mentioned before, any longer resource intensive or parallel jobs should be run through a batch script or must be run through a batch script. And the batch system that is used at Upmax and at HPC2N is called Slurm. And Slurm is an open source job scheduler, which provides three key functions. So it keeps track of the available system resources it enforces local system resource usage and the job scheduling policies, and it manages a job queue and it distributing work across resources according to these policies. So in order to run one of the uh, batch job, you first need to create and submit a Slurm submit file. And when you are looking this up online, you will see that uh, the submit file can also be called batch submit file, batch scripts, job scripts, and um, many other words are used for it, but uh, these are the most common ones. And uh, there is more guides and documentation about the batch system in general, and also about uh, the Slurm scheduler and the policies at um, this link here on the support uh, at HPC2N and one here at the uh, max. So let's see what is the workflow. First, you write a batch script. And inside the batch script, you need to load any modules you need. And if you're using any own installed packages, make sure r underscore libs underscore user is set. And that's done like this inside the script. And uh, you should ask uh, for resources, depending on if it's a parallel job or serial job, if you need some other resources like GPUs or whatever, and how much memory sometimes by, uh, so by getting more nodes and uh, sharing them. So they get all the memory and things like this. But that is all covered more on the how to write bad scripts on uh, our websites. And then when uh, you have asked for resources and loaded modules, you will give the command to your R script. And then you submit the batch script with the command sbatch and then the name of your batch script. And it is uh, common to put a file extension like .sh or .batch on your batch script. And that makes it easier for you to recognize which of your files are batch scripts, but this is not necessary. You can actually call the batch uh, file anything you want to. So. so look at some uh, useful commands to the batch system. First uh, is uh, for submitting the job. As I said, that is done with sbatch and the name of your job script. And if you give uh, the command sq minus u username, you would get a list of the jobs. And to check on a specific job, you would do S control show job and the job ID. And the job ID, you'll get that either when you submit the file, uh, the job with S batch, or when you get the list of your jobs with SQ. To delete a specific job, you can use S cancel and the job ID, or to uh, delete all your jobs, you would actually do S cancel minus U and your username. Uh, to get useful info about a job, you can use the uh, SACCT command. And since it's uh, very wide, you would pipe it to uh, less minus capital S, which makes it scrollable sideways. And uh, if you are on Kepnikaise, you can also give the command job usage and your job ID, which will then give you a URL to a page with info about the job but it is only on Kepnikaise. And I think I will just uh, quickly show. So here, let's try submit something. I will try submit this. 
And here you see when I submitted it, it gave me a job ID. And if I say sq minus u my username, it tells me that I have one job here. Yeah, this is a job ID. This is a partition is running in. This is the name of uh, the job script. You can give them uh, also give names to your job directly in the script. Otherwise, it's just name for your um, submit script. Then this is that's me. And then the state it's in, which is pending, how long it has been running, and how many nodes, and uh, what it is doing, why it's not doing things like running or whatever. It would say the yeah, it says it's because of priority. Let's see, it's still uh, waiting. So here, if I do the uh, S control show job and the job ID, I get a lot of information. For instance, here the job state that it's pending. That is my job, the job ID. When it has started running, it will say uh, that here, how long it has run, what time it was submitted, start time. And it also has a, um, it usually has a time where it's guessing it can start. Let's see that right now. Anyway, this is uh, quite useful. And also you can also see uh, where is your submit script uh, lo located specifically, where is your working directory. So we can look at this, there's a lot of information. It also tells you how many nodes you got, how many CPUs, and uh, which ones when you have some, uh, uh, when you have gotten, when the job has started. And see, it already ran now. And as you can see, it created an output file and it looks like this. And this is how an output file looks uh, by default. If uh, you name it differently, which you can inside, you can name it differently inside of your job job script and um, that is uh, one way to for instance split the errors and the output in one in more than one file so but this is how it looks def by default and this is how it's going to look if you're just using these uh, example files so slurm minus the job id dot out so the slurm scheduler handles the allocations and uh, we all re interactive sessions will be covered later instead of previous because we moved it around. Uh, the batch jobs will run without any intervention from you. That means you should make sure that uh, you don't need to give input to it while it's running. And it consists of the first part, so we see slum parameters describing allocation resources, and the second part describing the work and uh, loading modules and things and including one or several R scripts. And remember to include any possible input argument to the R scripts in the batch script because remember you cannot uh, do anything with it when it's running. So let's look at an example R batch script and uh, this is for a serial one. So first we have this kind of an incantation or whatever invocation and it uh, is telling the script that it's going to run in the bash shell. You don't need to worry about it. It's just that this is the only one that's fully compatible with the batch uh, scheduler. So just always put that. And then we have some of these commands to the batch system. And you preface those with hashtag sbatch. It must be capital. And then here we are saying it want, I want it in this allocation, in this project. And this is the project, uh, course project for this course. So you put that there. And uh, after the course, you should change it to your own project if you have one. This project will be valid for one, two weeks or something after. So you can test out the examples. 
but after that you need your own. Then I am saying how long I want it to run. I'm asking for 10 minutes here. This is uh, hours, this is minutes, this is seconds. At HPC to N, the maximum is a week. I'm not sure what the maximum is at uh, Opmax. Someone from Opmax can maybe tell me that. But anyway, it's probably in the same order. Uh, and here I am then asking for one core, and that is because it's a serial script. Then we load any modules we need, and here I'm loading uh, R, and then I am running my R script, and I'm doing it like this. And I'm sure that at SPC to end, it looks almost exactly the same, except that of course it, uh, in this case it would be a different uh, project ID and uh, since the course don't have a project on uh, Kepnekaise then you would have to put in your own one here and it would be on this form. Another difference is that uh, we need prerequisites loaded to load R but otherwise it's the same. And then I have this uh, very simple R script that just says hello world. And if you want to, you can test these out here afterwards. So uh, what if you had a parallel one? Well, for instance, you could use for each and do parallel or you can use RMPI, but there's one thing that uh, is certain, and that is that you need to ask for more than one uh, core in order to do it parallel. So again, much of this is the same as before, but in this case, I'm saying I want a whole node and that I'm doing with a capital N. And then I'm saying that uh, each task should use uh, four cores or four CPUs. Then again, I am asking for this uh, module and then I'm starting it like this. And it looks much the same on HPC to N again. Only difference here is uh, the prerequisites. And of course, always remember to check how many uh, cores are on each node if you are doing uh, anything there. And this is the script. And this should run. There should be a script that you can test it with here. This parallel for each Rackham. Let us try to open it. And as you can see, it's this one. And you can try run it if you want to. And there's also one for our MPI. And uh, that is also here. That is this one. So you can run that as well. And if there's also one for SPC to N. And here is the R script. So. And then finally, there is an example for uh, machine learning code. And in uh, this case, it is uh, just using CPUs again. Uh, so it will run on Rackham. And you have it here. R script underscore ml minus Rackham dot sh. And in this case, I'm showing how you can uh, split the output and the errors into different files. And uh, one thing to pay attention to is that it's a good idea to include the environment variable percentage J. The reason for that is that it will contain the job ID. And that means that if you run it more than once, then it will not overwrite the previous one, but create a new one. So that is good. Here we have the same one for SPC to N and then the script. So uh, we have some exercises and uh, I would suggest that you maybe spend a little time uh, trying to do them. And uh, there are some, um, you can run both the serial script and you can make the change to it to run it instead for hello R, run it for the add to R. And in that case, remember the arguments. 
and there is solutions here. And then you can try running the parallel job or you can try run the R for ML one, maybe try and make some changes to it if you feel like try running it for maybe more coarse or whatever. So, uh, but first uh, go and copy these uh, files here. And if you already did or did it previously, I mean, I updated some of them yesterday. So if you uh, say copied this yesterday or the day before, then you should do an update to it. And uh, so go into this directory if you have it and then do a git pull so that you can get any updates to it uh, with new, new exercises. So you have the newest version of everything. And if you hadn't already uh, done this, then as I mentioned before, go to code, copy this uh, URL here. It needs to be the one for HTTPS and copy it by clicking here as well. And then go to your directory on Rackham, say git clone, and then this uh, URL. And we suggest that you run it uh, in this directory here, slash pry slash uh, pi minus r minus jl, and create a subdirectory under it for yourself. Call it something uh, useful, like your username or whatever, so you can recognize it. And then clone it inside that directory. So I will stop sharing. And uh, then you should uh, spend a little time trying to do the exercises. I don't know, do we have maybe 10 minutes? And let's see, there is a question. Ah. Uh, Bjorn was saying that it's also seven days for Opmax. So seven days is the maximum time for uh, a batch script. And that has to do with the fact that uh, we need to do maintenance, maintenance from time to time. So we have to be able to reboot the nodes. And that's also the thing that if you run it for very long, it uh, starts to be more likely that something will go wrong with the nodes. and you will then lose a lot of work unless you continuously write your data to a file or whatever and to checkpointing or something like this. So, uh, so there are several reasons for not having very long jobs if it can be avoided. 